It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. Happy Monday. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3. Double T 97.3.com. And the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank alongside Dr. Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We are joining you today until 6 o'clock. Would love to hear your thoughts and your comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at Double T 97.3.com. All guests appear via the benchmark Hotline. Gus, how you going? How was your weekend? I'm doing all right. It was pretty good. We uh went to a uh went to a wedding on Saturday night that was fun. The a happy couple got married off, so that was all good. How fun, was the spread? Fun time was had by all. It was good. Ample supply of uh cocktails there or uh cold beer, I guess. You sound better. better. Yeah. Yeah, feel better. Yep. A little, little tired, but yeah, the you know what? When you know, I told you, and we talked about it on the air, the I got a shot that morning, you know, sounded terrible and all that. And I mean, within 36 hours, like the next, you know, by mm-hmm. really the next day, I shouldn't even say 36 hours, 24 hours, and you know, felt, felt great. I wish I had a bottle of that stuff. <laughs> Doctor says you can kind of take it once a quarter. Oh, okay. A shot like that for an illness, as long as you don't have a fever. I mean, I you could know. probably get that stuff on like the dark web. <laughs> oh, exactly. I, uh, it, uh, did, did me right. And it, and it is exactly what she said it would be like. It just kind of speeds it up, speeds you through a little head cold type deal like that. We, we've, we've batted around in the past the, uh, the, the old versus young game show idea, right? Where <laughs> yeah. somebody that's like younger than Clint yeah, would sure. have to. I think it's great. Dial a, <laughs> you know, call someone with a rotary phone or, you know. Record a message on an ex- answering yeah, machine. Yeah, record something on a, <laughs> on a television with a VCR. Yeah. I think one of the, the challenges for the older folks would be, hey, you've got to find something. You've got to buy something on the dark web yeah. oh, in, in like even. an hour. And, and I, I feel like I'm, there was a time that I was IT savvy. And so I, I would, uh, that would be a, I, I really wouldn't even know how to start. I'd do I'd I'd go to Google. Sure. Go, How do I get on the dark web? Do I need to download something? Uh, realizing that I'd be opening myself up to every oh you'd be on a list. virus. And oh yeah, list there's no and... doubt. You you show up in Langley. <laughs> yeah, you have a file. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Who's this clown? <laughs> some I don't. I, I scrolled down to try to find out this person's name because I think it was one of our regular texters um, on Friday. But they were because you and I were both in rough shape. Not yeah. that we were just like you know at death's door, but we just. Yeah, it, you know, cough, sniffles, whatever. Somebody recommended getting some cough syrup with, yeah, um, oh yeah, dextromethorphan or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I did that on the way home on Friday. Yeah. That was a lifesaver, really, over the weekend. And so sense. that's the. That's I'm not normally the, a big cough syrup guy, and that's the brand there. That's just Mucinex. Yeah, that, that's but I mean, the that's, ingredient. But that's it, is what I'm saying. That that's the. That's that's the, um, the fruits of your advice. No, yeah, this is it. actually my second bottle. Hey. Uh, I don't know that I would have been able to sleep on Friday or Saturday night without it. Just coughing up a fit. It, yeah. it actually got worse as I got when I got horizontal. Yeah. So, anyways, That's whoever exa- that was, yeah, no doubt. Thank you very much. I've been wanting to thank you uh, ever since that, uh, this weekend. And again, I said it the other day, and you just described it when when Dana, my wife, gets a cold or something like that. Her her after effect is exactly that. She can be up. You know, good the whole day, whatever, feeling better, and the, so lay down, get horizontal, hack. Time to feel like crap. And so then, it, yeah. then, then she goes in there and like sleeps in the recliner, you know, and just you know mm-hmm. fighting through that deal. And, and that's I was laughing because last week I was looking for some Nyquil, that kind of stuff, you know, and <laughs> we got like five half bottles of sure. cough medicine that are you know somewhere between <laughs> yeah, one and seven years old you gotta hey this one expired in 2016 give it a it's shot it's still good it's still good uh, we'll break that out at a party <laughs> uh we get this in the yates flooring center chat line michael from the ranch ad i wanted to congratulate us on the astros win we are lifelong astros fans huh. and former houstonians houston astros world series win proves they're the greatest sports team in the history of the world um <laughs> yeah america's team what can well, I say? like they they dang sure have a good thing going right now, and and uh, 
to to uh, to close. Of course, the parade was today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going. On, yeah, right. Uh, As we today. yeah yeah they were gearing up kind of late morning. I assume it's run through there, but maybe not. But you know we I've I've kept you sort of filled in on the the Parker Mashinsky saga. Of course, Red Raider pitcher that's been on the taxi squad mm-hmm. and doing his deal. And after the first two playoff wins, I got a I I, I got it. I was more I was in a group. You know, he he's sending that stuff mainly to Brooks, my son. But the, I got the selfie with the goggles on, you know, because they pour beer on each other. And I guess beer in the eyes burns. Makes sense. Never experienced it. Uh, so I shot him a text after the game. I'm like, hey, wanna, I want, you know, we want a, go- a, a goggles selfie. So that night at w- 1 in the morning, I didn't see it until the next morning. He was like, didn't have the goggles, but I pressed on, you know, whatever, fought through it. And then his mom sends a picture of him, you know, and they're all, it's kind of the group photo celebrating, and he's got a cigar about this long hanging out of his mouth. And I thought, yeah, he's he had a good night. They had fun in the locker room, as they should. No doubt. Yeah, but that was, uh, I mean, it was an unlit cigar. I think it was probably more of a prop than anything. I don't know. Maybe he did smoke the cigar, but he. Uh, it's probably been a heck of a few days for him just to get to go through that. And he'll, you know, he'll he'll probably get a ring and get get playoff share and the whole deal. So it's and hopefully he'll play more next year. Yeah, and then yeah, maybe get a little bit more prominent role or something. But he's uh, there living was a guy the in Texas squad last year that turned out to be pretty right, good yeah, this year. The Pena kid. Yeah. Hey, and we answered our trivia question that you you sent it in a little group to. Mm-hmm. I don't know where else that had circulated, but I circulated the answer. I sent it to you guys and I put it on trivia on the. On Twitter, the uh, you asked any other World Series MVPs that had played at, at Dan Law at Field. Dan Law Field against Tech, and and my first answer was Pena. Obviously, played for Maine here. I think to start the 2018 season, that that was the genesis of the question. But my first response was Joe Carter, because Joe Carter played for Wichita State here, uh, and like against Coach Segrist's team, like 79, 80 ish, whatever. But Joe Carter wasn't the World Series MVP. He hit that walk-off home run, and that's that's what I'm thinking. Oh, it's Joe Carter. It has to be. Yeah, Pat Borders was the MVP. Oh, and so wow. I had to, the key thing was getting to a list of MVPs and looking down through it. But we did find another one, and it was um, Dallas Baptist with the Cubs. Um, so of all the of all the teams who have rolled through here over the years to play Texas Tech, yeah, right? Especially Southwest Conference. Yeah, the Big only 12. two to have yeah. uh, have fielded a future World Series MVP: yeah. the Maine Black Bears and the Dallas DBU Bucks. Eagles. Uh, Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles, whatever they are. Give me the name. What's his name? The switch hitting dude from Kansas City. Come on, you're the Royals guy. Come on, Clint. Guy. Jeez, he was with the Royals doing? the year before. Come on, 2016 World Series MVP. That gun. Uh, ben Zobrist. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Zobris, Zobris was the other one. So he played. A, he played a game Clint. here. Jeez. He was at DBU for one year, two thousand four, and they played a game here. So Zobris had like the coolest little two year stretch there where he just kept oh, on getting traded an to yeah. the world. Oh, no, right. oddly silent two, two seconds ago. Oh, Zobris. Yeah. No, that, that, you're exactly right. He he uh he uh went from went from Royals and kind of had a similar role with both. Went from Royals to Cubs and was very productive player and helping both those teams win but yeah that there, there's the two that was the answer to the trivia so there's uh there's probably no better indication like if you were if you've been asleep or in a coma for like the last 72 hours and you just woke up and flipped on tech talk there's probably no better indication of how saturday went <laughs> than the <laughs> fact that we spent the first 10 minutes talking about the astros and, and coughing yeah. and stuff i think the, the to, to close the thing though I, you and i were to guess because i was thinking of roger clemens mm-hmm. the longhorn sure in there somewhere one of those guys but the, none, none of them won the world series mvp so there you there was our answer more tech talk next the podcast that finishes your workday in a very red raider way this is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, it's the juice on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Gus and Clint. I'm Aaron. This look at your biggest sports headlines brought to you by our friends at Specs Wine, Spirits, and Finer Foods. Basketball returns to the USA today. With a girl boy doubleheader, Red Raiders and Lady Raiders. The women's basketball team will take on Texas AM Corpus Christi tonight, 5 30 p.m. is when that game will tip off. Our coverage will start for you at 5 o'clock on 1077 Yes FM. 
The men's team, meanwhile, will take on Northwestern State. Tip-off at 8 o'clock. Our coverage will start for you at 7.30 on Double T 97.3. You can also watch this game on ESPN+. Plus. <coughs> the 25th ranked Raider, 25th ranked Red Raiders, excuse me, have won 22 straight season openers. Uh, interesting day in Indianapolis. The Colts have fired fifth-year head coach Frank Reich and named Jeff Saturday as the team's interim head coach. Saturday's 47 years old, a six-time pro bowler, played 13 years for the Colts, and up until this afternoon was an ESPN <laughs> analyst. He's in, his, in, the, in the Colts Ring of Honor. He's been a consultant uh, and also was the head coach for the Hebron Christian Academy in Georgia for three seasons. That is the extent of his coaching experience. You too can join the program. Let us know what you think on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Gus, what did you think of the game on Saturday? Well, you know, frustrating. Um, you know, I thought there were a, a lot of pluses, most notably that you're, you know, leading leading that ball game with a, I don't know, I guess it threw three quarters, right? And about right at three quarters. Um, Frustrating that they couldn't finish again, and and uh, um, you know in that regard, it sort of felt like K State and some of those games that some of those road losses in which they hung around but just couldn't couldn't do anything, and then played from behind. Um, you know, I, I thought the defense played pretty well. Now you get to the final point total, and it doesn't look that great. But they again seventeen thirteen at the end of three quarters. Um, Obviously, there's some frustration there with the refs and that kind of stuff. But I, you know, I, I'm gonna say that's the talk of losers. I don't want to say losers. A better way to say that would be of the losing team. I don't want anybody to think I'm le who, yeah, le her, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not. N nobody's a loser that way. I mean, I can think of some losers, but not. That's not what I'm saying. The team that lost is the one that's griping about some calls and this kind of crap. But um. Because there was some frustration, and it was really right there at the end of the third quarter. You had a chance to. I don't think that. I don't think the face mask sack was going to get us off the field, but it was going to create third and long, right? That wasn't on third down. I think it was going to create like right. third and fifteen yeah. or something, if I remember correctly. But it was definitely going to put them behind the eight ball, and and uh, and and that call went their way, and then the, the pi thing went their way. I mean, there was two or three calls in that deal that were like, God dang, man, you know, just, but. You know, I, I, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, frustrating to have another quarterback go down. Just, I mean, there's so much about that game. Um, felt like it felt like it exposed our lack of, of real weapons, maybe at the, uh, perhaps at the receiver position. Um, yeah. And that, you know, especially because I think, I think we went into that game knowing that Cleveland was out or we got that news at the very beginning. And then uh, Jaron Bradley makes a couple plays and then gets knocked out on the targeting play. And then um, Sparkman that went out of the game as well, I think, in that right? But, yeah, it just, you know, by the end of the game, that the receiver group that was out there wasn't exactly a group of game changers. And probably a lot easier to defend, especially with TCU ahead a couple scores late. So it was just, you know, just frustrating into it. But I don't I'm not I'm not giving up on anybody or anything. It's just it's just where, where this program is right now. That was gonna be a tough 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 road win and the the you know, it's, it's I think it's like we've talked about on with regard to just all things in sports. In some ways, it's easier just to get your tail kicked because you don't walk out of there going, oh, if only A and B had happened or B and C had happened. And, uh, you know, but it's... Because if you get your tail kicked, especially against a team ranked in the top 10 <clears throat> at their place, yeah. you can go, you know what? They're, they're better they're, than they're us. They're just yeah. head and shoulders better. Yep. Um, and that, that clearly isn't the case. Um and yeah, and 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 
I, I have to start here too by saying, like, if you would have said, or if the future fairy would have come down and said, hey, uh, you're going to be leading at the start of the fourth quarter, I'd take it. Right? Oh, yeah. I would have said, Heck yes, yeah. I choose that timeline, please. You bet. Sign me up. You I bet. will commit to that. And so that's good. That is, that is, you know, and, and the way that that game started, I, mean, I was prepared for T should run out of fireworks again, right? Because they, they open up, you know, you go three and out, they return the punt for a touchdown. Then you return the punt or the, the ensuing kickoff for some reason. And like, you know, it's a mess as per normal. Um, and it doesn't look good. And then you stop them and you score and you tie the game up. And then suddenly it's like, okay, the, the, the got a game here. Um, but man, it's just like, th- this is not a fun offense to watch. Like it just isn't. I mean, we're nine games right. in th- there are a myriad of reasons. Uh, I don't think there's one person to blame. No, no. Um, I think that there are that a lot of, uh, a significant chunk of that is stuff that's out of the control of the people involved, players and coaches, namely injuries and also who you have on the roster. Yep. <clears throat> but either way, it's just it's a it's not fun to watch. When it just the- isn't. It's a chore, and yeah, yep. uh, and that that chore will be made even more uh, painful this weekend with uh, Baron Morton confirmed to be out. Yep, he is not going to play. We heard that today at lunch and uh you know we went into that game this weekend without two linemen monroe mills was out and um uh, the right guard was out and um uh, you know the coming out of that game it's like man it'd be great to get monroe mills back because this time last week the the talking point was creating a competition out there for caleb rogers spot at left tackle you can't do that because the the next best guy needed to go play right tackle because of that injury. And so it's one of those things that's not sexy to talk about. The two linemen are out and he, uh, whatever, number 76, you know, don't, don't really think about him. But it ends up, ends up, you know, being a part of the conversation. Now, the good news is, is Monroe Mills is back this week and Landon Peterson is back this week. And so um, t- two guys get restored. Ty Buchanan most likely out of this week. Um so uh, in that regard, to get a little bit healthier up front, but and they're going to need it. Clint, is the clock on your side of the window or our side of the window? That clock facing you is not working for some reason. No, I, I know it's not working. I was just wondering to see if it was on your side of the window or our. Oh, oh, your side. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll. I have some thoughts about Caleb Rogers, but I don't know that we have enough time. Yeah, I'll make it work. Um. Uh, what gives, like, I guess the one kernel of hope that I have with Caleb Rogers is Terrence Steele, right? Mm-hmm. Because, what, two years ago, whenever it was when Terrence Steele was kind of thrust into action with the Cowboys due to some injuries, <coughs> he was awful. I mean, he was yeah. god-awful for the Cowboys. He was a, he was a pincushion on Twitter. He, he was just a target for easy criticism because, again, he was just awful out there for the Cowboys. Just terrible. Revolving door. And yet you look now, and he's one of their better offensive linemen. Right? Experience, another couple of years of development, all that stuff. That's that's my one kernel of hope for Caleb Rogers. Um, because it's, I mean, it's, it's Terrence Steele, rookie year, Cowboys bad out there. And part of it's not his fault because I guess he's the best you have for that position. But good God, yeah, and that that's the key is it's the best best you got because they created a week of competition and he won it probably won it hands down because you know next best guy to play right tackle. More tech talk next. podcast put together with red raider fans in mind hi how are you good afternoon it's tech talk on double t97.3 and double t973.com with gus and clint i'm aaron but love to hear your thoughts and comments today on this yates flooring center chat line Uh, you can also weigh in the double t973 mobile app presented by happy state bank all guests appear via the benchmark hotline now this is the chat line Uh, ad and his america's team garbage all last week last week 
Uh, and Clinton with his Jayhawks garbage all this week. What did we, the <laughs> listeners, do to deserve this assault on our ears? Uh, this in the chat line. Uh, can you talk about OC options? Kitley is not getting this done. <coughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't love um, some of the some of the choices that have been made um, offensively over the course of the season. I haven't like stood on a table and like ranted about it, but like I, I I'm confused by. Uh, the quarterback shuffling, even when they're all healthy, um, I, I I just don't like it. It hasn't been effective. It it seems like outside looking in, I have no I have no information, I have no perspective. It seems like hey, we're trying to do the best job that we can to minimize portal losses, right? By kind of letting everybody eat a little bit. I, I mean, just play the game, all right? Um, and and again, I said at the beginning of the show, the offense has been a chore to watch. I don't I don't think that Kitley is like the the main culprit there. No. He's the OC, right? He's the quarterback coach. And so on some level, quarterback's missing throws is on him. You're either coaching it or allowing it to happen. Um, but, I mean, like the the Tyler Shuck sequence where you, you, you know, turn it over on downs in part because he throws it deep down the field on like third and two or fourth and two, that's, that's not, it's not Kittley in his ear going, hey, throw it deep, dude. Just let it go. Let it fly, dude. Hmm. No, I mean, the the middle of the field was, I mean, Shuck could have run for it. It was two yards. Uh, he just didn't see it. And then the Donovan Smith sequence, there was there was someone wide open. that, that I mean, that play could have gone for 40 yards, and he just missed it. Yeah. And, okay, Kitley shoulders some of the blame for that because he's the coach and they should be better at this point. I, I mean, that's a fair argument if you want to make it. But I'm not going to go um, ding him for that call there because – in both instances, if you look at it, the play was there to be made. It just wasn't. And I, I know your I know your philosophy on uh you know, bad play call criticism. <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's some truth to that. But the yeah, I think the um I mean there's there's been scenarios now in which all three quarterbacks have been out of a game due to injury. Now Donovan was suited up in in Stillwater. But but all the reports there was that he was banged up and Morton was the better guy to go. And so that's an amazing turn of events there. Because I, I don't even think the quarterback play is especially reckless. We're not giving up just an insane number of sacks. I know that's not and, and I know it's not a great number right now. All three of these guys are relatively mobile. We're not talking about you know, three just pocket passers by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, the I was curious when it happened in the moment. Uh, actually, McGuire addressed that third and two that you're talking about because you know I had a couple of people texting me go, "Why are we throwing a deep?" You know, and 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 the thing you never know is what the play call is versus what the quarterback thought he see. Sure, I know the play was for that guy right there, but I had single coverage over there. You know, and so who, who is that? Whose read is that? Whatever, or is it is it a call play? You know, that that kind of stuff, and that's that's really the hard thing to know. But McGuire talked about it today that he said, hey, when we get in those third and shorts, let's be aggressive, you know, be aggressive with our play calling, which was interesting. Uh, and, and it flew counter to the counter to the result right there because it set up the fourth and two. They bring in Donovan. And Donovan, the, the, the fourth down or the short yardage pre- previous time, at, well, I'm not saying the, first, the previous series or whatever, but the – the time before that in which he brought in, he made the first down with his legs. And, I, and I'm not quoting McGuire directly, but he he addressed this exact sequence. So the play's called this time, and he's got a run-pass option. And again, he's thinking, hey, I, I got the first down before with my legs. I'm 245 pounds. Not overthinking this deal. But we all saw what you just said. Brooks flips out there in the in – the, uh, in the flat, and that was just a little dump pass. That would be a, a simple little thing. And if he shakes one tackler, I mean, it's going to be the first down, no doubt. And if he shakes a tackler, who knows what's going on because they TCU had just jammed the box. And so it was, it was going to be a foot race. And uh, at, at worst, it was going to be a foot race. 
Well, I'm sorry. At best, it's a foot race to the end zone. At worst, it's first you know, and ten. Yeah, seven yards on a first down or whatever. And and Donovan never looked. <coughs> and so, you know, th- those are the kind of things that, I mean, they, they uh, you know, I, I'm I'm never super comfortable with. Oh, this one's on the coach. This one's on the player. I I don't care. We lost. All right. I mean, my team lost. I don't. You know, I I don't need to. I I don't need to know that. I mean, I, it's just not that it's not my play or whatever, you know, in that sense that Donovan, Donovan had two options and the one he took was wrong. Whose fault is that? Well, Kelly didn't coach him up enough, you know, and ultimately it does fall to the yeah, coaches I mean, and that's why it's stupid to sit around and talk about who this is on or who's that a tendency, is on. You know, and I think this is probably human nature, I guess, to try and blame like to, to distill everything down into right. blaming one person. Exactly. Right? Like Herbert Hoover caused the depression. Right. It's all on Herbert Hoover. Right. You know, Hooverville's the whole deal. Um, <clears throat> you know, Jimmy Carter is, you know, it was the reason why things were crappy in the late 1970s. It's never, it's never <laughs> that simple. Um, and, and there's no one person to blame here. I, I think that could Kitley have called a better game? Sure. I mean, everybody could have. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that Donovan Smith and Tyler Shuck could have made better decisions only because, you know, we kind of see that on the field. We don't have the uh, insight into the specific play calls uh, with, with the coordinators. Could the officials call a better game? Oh, yeah. Yep, no doubt. Um, could could the receivers have played better? Sure. Could the O-line could have played better? Duh. Yeah, obviously. But I, I mean, bottom line is, you know what makes great coaches? Great players. And how well, many great players do you have on offense right now? The answer is zero. You don't. I mean, maybe yeah. in other systems, maybe with another kind of complementary piece around them to uh, accentuate their talents. Sure, but we've talked about this before with Jakeem Grant. Right, he was a three-star player out of uh, ooh, uh, Mesquite Horn. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, committed to Tulsa, and Tech came in late, snagged him up. He was a five-star player for Texas Tech. He would have been a two-star at Alabama because they just would not have used him the way that Tech did. Um, you probably have some players who are four or five star players in different schemes, different situations, but not this one. You have no team speed on offense. Um, I mean, Valdez has some speed. You saw that on Saturday. That was nice. You have inconsistency at quarterback either because of inexperience, injury, or a combination of the two. Um, your O line is a minus. You have minimal depth there, which further makes that situation a minus. Um, and that's what it is. Like you, you have size. That's not doing anything for you. Whether it's the quarterback's not seeing your size or you're not playing up to that size or some combination of the two, it is what it is. And so I'm terrified of Saturday. <laughs> I, and then I'm even more terrified. I mean, not even terrified. I, I have negative faith in the offense to get any kind of points scored in Ames yeah. against that defense. Even if Baron Morton is back, uh, I just haven't seen enough. <clears throat> and so... Yeah, I mean, can you outscore Kansas this weekend and keep your bull hopes alive? Hopefully. But, I mean, at this point, I just, you need to add some speed this offseason. You need to be dramatically better up front, and you hope that whatever quarterback remains uh, on this roster going into the next year can A, stay healthy, and can B, um, you know, develop. Yeah, and this is the same ankle that, Morton's dealt with since that OSU game right there before the half in Stillwater where the dude kind of fell on it. It was one of those Which things that you Which makes me could... kind of question the calculus of leaning on the speed option. And I get it, right? You play the win to game, and, and I, they must have been comfortable with it. But, I mean, it's one thing to have them scramble if things kind of break down or to call call the odd random um, you, you know quarterback draw. But if he is compromised to the point where, you know, a relatively routine tackle can cause him to leave the game, jump in a boot, and then miss the next game. Maybe speed option, as schematically advantageous as it might have been, yeah. maybe that's not the best call um, for that particular week. I, I'm not privy to all the information. I don't pretend to be. I find that curious. More Tech Talk next. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. You know the feeling, and this is, I mean, maybe rare. It's happened to me twice in the last nine months where you find 
<clears throat> an old song that really slaps yeah that you've never heard of before oh never heard of okay and um i thought it meant like you were gonna say one that you're reacquainted with like joy division level terrace apart was one that i had never heard of before up until like i don't know nine months a year ago or okay. so it sounds awesome and then like uh I'd never heard SOS by by ABBA before, and that song's awesome. <laughs> Have you heard of that, Clint? You know what I'm talking about? No, when you went uh, SOS, it's probably the wrong title. My mind was jumping to the police. No, and no. You completely spun my head around when you yeah. said ABBA. Look, you listen to it. You let me know what you think. I think you'll like it. Uh, the I, the I, problem with ABBA is there's a – before I listen to it, there's like a – 25% chance I've heard it before and just didn't know that was the title because that's about every ABBA song Maybe. I've ever yeah. heard. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Have you, you know what I'm talking about here? Well, yeah. No, well, maybe. I'd probably hear it. I'm I'll sure Clint will play it at the end of the yeah. segment here. The, uh, Don't give it away. Oh, man. You screwed up the segue. I was thinking of a song I've been reacquainted with. I found a Prince song that I liked about 30 years ago called Release It. It was just kind of buried in a, buried in a tape and you know, not not the feature not a song. Single, it was the early nineties, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I heard the song. I was like, man, I forgot all about that. And you know, now it's in my playlist, and I'm love that song. It's, yeah, but it, I don't know. I'd have to think about a song that I uh, at the wedding the night Mr. Brightside was on. Of course, I, I didn't. Not that I'd lost track with that, but it was just in that moment, I was like, that, that song just. It's kind of like an old friend Slapped. that you yes. like, you, that you just kind of occasionally see every now and then, and, and you realize, you know what, this is a really good old friend. Yeah, like why don't we hang out more? That kind of a deal. Like this sometimes, person's... sometimes when I go to Rio you know, because I only go like every couple years, and I leave there, I'm like, why don't I do that more often? Just it's pretty, mm -hmm. and laid back, and all that. Not that far away. Worry. It'll be yeah, it's not that far away, and then it'll be two years before I go back, and it's the same kind of thing. This in the chat line. The biggest problem was our coach going it forward on fourth down three straight times on our side of the field. Metrics he is using are mind-boggling, and nobody uses them. He made a game and non-game, screwed our D time and time again. I like McGuire, but he's not much of a coach. He's a hype man and recruiter. Um, so it's 27-17. Uh, it's yeah, because the, the – Well, okay, let's do this. The 20 to 17 it's, was the fourth and two we just right, discussed. Right, 20 to 17, third and two, Tyler Shuck throws it deep down yeah. the field to, to Loic Fungi. He could have just ran for the first down. That's a bad decision on the quarterback. Um, You know, may, maybe if you would have called an inside run, it would have converted. I mean, but w w the play was there, right? right? Uh, the first down was there. Fourth and two, Donovan Smith runs for loss of two yards. If you just like flick it over to Taj Brooks, uh, that's a first down. Yeah, that play words, was there. In other words, that one was very clearly the play and, call was not the problem. And that was like, an execution problem there. To me, even even you know Wells or Kingsbury, right? Like, what what do you want to do in the thirty six? You want to kick a fifty two yard field goal? Like, how how great do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. You know, and the end result of of. Like, what do you think is more likely? Anti-analytics person, right? I, to me, this is the most defensible, like, logical, sane decision here. W what do you think is more likely, getting two yards or or nailing a 52-yard field goal? Yeah. Right? Or 53, whatever it is. Um, I think the – yeah, and, and then the, the, the second one, you know, there was an interesting article posted, and it was, it was on the – was it football focus talking football about scoop? It. Yep. There you go. I'll, I'll let you take that. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Though. Well, I did not, I had the broadcast on, obviously okay. I was watching it on TV, but I did not have the audio up. I, I was listening to our guys. I was listening to, to, <laughs> to so I did not hear the radio, I, the, the Gus Johnson who was doing yeah, play by play. Um, he, he apparently just went like lost his mind over some of the fourth down calls. And again, kind of like the guy that was sitting behind me and offering play by play at the West Virginia game. Like where have you been, dude? Right. Like I, I, he calls games every weekend, but right. I mean, from from doing a show with Chris Level for the longest time, I know the amount of prep that he puts in for yeah. to radio broadcast, and he does some TV too. And I'm sure that Gus Johnson puts in the same amount of work, if not more. 
he should know. This should not have taken him, him by surprise at all. Um, I mean, yeah. But anyways, he goes ballistic over it, and you know, it, it just it seemed a little bit. Uh, it, it seemed really bad when you add that because he won. And there was also the the biased part of the call, and there was a part that seemed unprepared, like he wasn't ready to see that many fourth down attempts. But then you also add in the mispronunciations of several Red Raider names, like Tyler Shook mm. was pretty bad. That, I mean, yeah. that was hard to listen to. And, like, Shook is not some, you know, brand new person out here. Right. I mean, right? And and that's a, he played at Oregon and for the, a minute. And the phonetics of that are easy. I mean, in other words, you know, when you're when – you're, and this this is one of the radio TV preps I do, and and John Harris is interesting. He would take a name like Tyler Shuck and he wouldn't write it down S H O U G H, and then he I would it phonetically. I would yeah, I would write it out S H U C K in parentheses next to it. He would just do exactly what you just said. He would write down Tyler S H U C K in on his scorebook. Right, everything he's referring to, and like of all the names, and I get it. If you've never heard it, you think that's like shuff or show or something like no 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 shuck s-h-u-c-k it's a it's another real word and so in our phonetics you know every roster has them that's why they print up those media notes they didn't have to print them out but i mean to me that's the most basic of of prep like the least i can do is get these names right and and but i think the, to your point aaron that i mean there's been articles in the athletic written about fourth down text text going for it Here's the reason why, you know, full and I, you know, it's it's become part of the narrative. We've gone for it more on fourth down than any team in the country. Like there, there's the story right there, and so I, you know, that he that he butchered it the way that he did, and that everyone who enjoyed us going what six for eight or whatever yeah. against Texas and thought that was great now has a problem with going for it and. and- like, down twenty to seventeen on a two fourth and two. Come I on. think the uh, the disconnect for a lot of people, and and I found myself like even their their last. Um, when, when was it that they went uh, went for like on just I mean deep on their own side of the field last week? Oh yeah, it was fourth and eighteen on the seventeen. All right, because it ended in an interception. Right, not not oh, a yeah. rundown. That's right, and this was the late. This is down twenty seven. Yeah, there's at this there's point. a minute and a half yeah. left. You're you're this down by seventeen points. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, convention would say, like long standing coaching convention would say, you punt it there, right? But are you're you're playing to win the game? Yes or no? Right, right, yeah, yeah sure. And so, does that make the score potentially look? More lopsided. Now, granted, it didn't end up hurting you. They didn't score. Who cares? Yeah. At that point, who cares? If, but if, if you've the got point it, is yeah. to win the game, if you're you're not going to. I mean, you're effectively just saying we're not winning this game. You are w- if you punt, raising yeah. the white flag and waving it and saying please ha- please have mercy on us and let's make the score, um, you, you know, stay respectable or whatever this is. Versus, we came here to win this damn game, and so. And we've got a one percent chance. I hated watching yeah. that game last on Saturday. Like it was ugly. It was irritating. Like, again, the offense is not fun to watch. I'm not sitting here like you know with pom poms and and rose colored glasses about everything's great. But I can at least understand the thought process here with yeah, that, no doubt. Too. Especially the the twenty to seventeen fourth and two to me is was easy. Uh, and even the other one, the the one that followed where yeah. it's. The down twenty seven seventeen. It's four and four. You're yes, basically midfield. It's, yes. You're on the Texas Tech forty five. The the previous two drives, TC would score touchdowns. They drove eighty yards down the field on their first touchdown. You know, two drives ago, you're, and then three plays, thirty four yards uh, on the immediately preceding drive. And so it's like we haven't stopped them in a minute. And we're that's exactly it. We're starting to get tired because we've been on the field a bunch. Yeah. And and they're starting to figure some things out. After There's nine and a half the, minutes left. You we're down it. two scores. Exactly. How, if we punt this ball away, what are the odds that we get two more possessions? I it's good, it. right? It's really good. Yeah. Like, it's not like the best long ever, but it's, I mean, yeah, I'll mess with it for sure. More Tech Talk next. It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. 
Hey, how are you? Good afternoon. Thank you for spending part of your Monday with us with Dr. Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We are joining you today until 6 o'clock. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at DoubleT973.com. All guests appear via the Benchmark Hotline. Uh, I did. There's a uh, there's a total lunar eclipse happening tomorrow. Yeah, the, I didn't know that. The red, yeah, yeah. Uh, initial phase begins at two o'clock our time in the morning. Uh, partial begins at three o'clock our time, and then the lunar disk will enter totality at four. 17 our time and last for about an hour and a half <coughs> we'll be able to see the uh, eclipse in totality here in north america last lunar eclipse last total lunar eclipse until 2025 yeah. what about that you guys uh getting up for that mm-hmm. i probably not what'd you say the time was on it? the uh the lunar disc will enter totality at 4 17 a.m mm. central time dang well, I'll probably it'll last an hour and a half. So if you wake up at oh, right. five fifteen, oh, mm. maybe mm. time zone is that central? Yeah, I'd put it Dang all in it. central. Because right. I would peek out of it. I uh, now there's a chance. There's a complete chance I'm up peeing at some in that hour right there. No, no shot. It's just pants one of the, to the floor. One of that's it's one, almost, of the, yeah. one of the joys of getting older. Uh, Lucas has this in the chat line. In hour. which case, I can go outside and just pee in the yard and look at the thing. There you go. It's a win-win. Four in the morning. Two birds, one go. stone. Perfect. Uh, our O-line has for- unfortunately not been there yet for more than four seasons now. It feels like, I mean, th- this surely has to be rock bottom. I mean, I, I, it can clearly get worse, um, but hopefully not. Well, and there's a, there's a, you know, you and I have talked about this. There's a narrative, a commonly held narrative that, um, uh, we didn't have an O line when Mahomes played here, so I, I don't think that's right. <laughs> you know, we've we've talked about that. You and I have uh, this in the chat line. Jalen Daniels should be healthy too. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, somebody else says Shuck has shown a few times he just isn't a good quarterback. What's his best game as a Tech player? TCU has an average defense at best. I mean, I. The numbers would say that you're right about TCU's defense, clearly. Um, you know, they've given up points and yards and bunches to different opponents. That wasn't the case even when Morton was in. You were struggling to move the ball and, and score points. I don't know if that's because they're better than we thought that they were, eh, the defense, or if you were just not playing well on offense. I think that's probably more likely the case. Uh, this other part, though, Shuck has shown a few times that he's not a good quarterback. I mean, he he wasn't good on Saturday. Um, he wasn't good for you last week, but at the same time, I mean, c- coming in off the bench in that scenario, I just don't know what you expect out of. Um, uh, anyways, so do I think he's some kind of savior and will you know have some kind of like awesome redemption style performance on Saturday? I don't expect that if he's the starter, even if he even plays. Yeah, they talked about <coughs> he and Donovan splitting reps. Um, yeah. I, Tyler Shuck is everything he, that I want in a starting quarterback until the ball is snapped. Well, and, you know, and he, he was, he's just so dang rusty right now. And, and you know, you hear the coaches say he did everything right when he was hurt. Yeah. You know, he was showing up, doing, you know, in other words, he, he didn't just work in. lay around the house. He went up there and did the film deal and all that, was in the meetings, and so his head was in the right place. But now it feels like it's just rusty, like just missing throws and just not sharp. And, hey, I get it. I mean, he for six weeks he couldn't do anything. You know, and and it's and it's not the physicality of it, of throwing the football. It's just the – Seeing things and being sharp. I mean, that's just that's just a hard thing to uh, substitute. You know, you, it's hard to simulate that kind of stuff. All the through, you know, AI goggles and all that other stuff. It's just tough thing to deal with. And so, you know, I, the thing that he has yet to do since he's come back 
is get into any kind of a rhythm. Have a have a couple of series where things start to click for him, and you go, okay, you know. But he's also, you know, the, at least this this past game where there's been a bunch of playing time for him when it was still a competitive situation. You're down two linemen. You're down two, if not three, receivers, and and just you know, there was nothing there that was set up to make to to go. Hey, here here's where something's going in his favor. Again. And I'm not. He got the keys of the car, but it was missing a tire. Yeah, the radio didn't work. Yes. And, and, and it's just it was a tough, steaming. tough deal. I'm not saying he, you know, shouldn't be able to make something out of it, but just, I mean, you know, his rust combined with all of this other stuff just didn't doesn't set him up for success. Yeah, it's like tough deal. There are any of these kind of flaws with this offense, right? By 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 itself in the vacuum is not fatal right i mean you've had slow teams before or you've had teams where you hadn't had a bunch of speed on offense i think back to 2010 for example maybe even 2009 um but you were fine i mean you went to bowl games both of those years you put up plenty of points you've had years where your offensive line has not been very good um i mean heck it seems like more often than not in the last four years or so um you've had years where you've had to play several different quarterbacks, and yet the offense has been able to kind of still move the ball. Problem is, all of those things are happening all at once. Yep. You know, and it's yep. just, it's, it's like you you can live with, you know, if your arm's cut of off, yeah. but if your arm and then two legs are off, yeah, you're pretty much hosed, dude. Like, good luck. Well, hopefully the, hopefully the return of, couple of linemen this week will help it can't hurt and um you know we'll see this in the yates flooring center chat line uh shuck will transfer to west virginia <laughs> i mean maybe I, I don't think i mean if he goes to the mountaineers i don't think he'll be coached by neil brown i think that i think the die is cast there i think neil brown is done cakes whether it's you know today or three weeks from now i don't think that's going to last uh this in the chat line um, from Raiders that unfortunately it wasn't just the seeing it he was floating balls and then way over throwing wide open guys <coughs> yep no argument yeah I, I I would I mean That's if he's saying. out there I, on Saturday I'm rooting for him right yeah uh, sure 100 for 100 5,000 yards a million touchdowns like whatever um but yeah I I didn't leave that experience on Saturday going oh I totally see how he won starting jobs in back-to-back years. I just, like, we've never seen that quarterback. Wow. Part of it largely due to injury. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Somebody says, Morton was 7 of 10 before his injury. Chuck was 9 of 22. His eyes never looked toward more than one receiver, just like last season. Yeah, he certainly didn't see that uh, he could have run for the first down on 32. Love to get your thoughts and comments on the H Flooring Center chat line at double T ninety seven three dot com. All guests appear via the benchmark hotline. Were you surprised that Tech was favored by as much as they were against Kansas? Yeah. I saw four and a half. Is that what you saw? I, I think it opened at five. Okay. Yeah, I was. And uh again it 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 may be a good indication to all of us that uh the sky isn't falling that our friends in the desert are going, hang on, wait a minute. But there's, you know, this, this Kansas, course, they, Kansas team is formidable. They've done, they've done a couple of things that we haven't done, namely beat OSU. Now that's a, that's a different OSU. Talk about playing teams at the right time. We got Texas at the right time. We didn't get OSU at the right time. That's part of the deal though. That's just part of the game. OSU had a rough, Rough, uh, what, eight days in the state of Kansas. They sure did. I mean, w- I mean, really rough. KU has moved the ball and scored on everybody but Iowa State. And that's... <coughs> right. Also- they they moved the ball and scored against TCU. They moved the ball and scored against Baylor in Waco. I think- You've been listening to the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Check out DoubleT973.com for more from Lubbock Sports Station.